Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be talking about scabies. Let's begin with a quick introduction. Scabies is an ectoparasite skin infection characterized by superficial burrows, intense pruritus or itching, and secondary infection. It's more common in children of less than 5 years of age and HIV patients. It's caused by a mite called Sarcoptes scabii, a variety hominins. The mite has a dimension of 0.4 to 0.3 millimeters. It has two pairs of suckers and hind pair bristles. Predisposing factors of scabies are high humidity, low temperature, lack of personal hygiene, and overcrowding. Let's take a look at the pathogenesis. The mode of transmission is by direct contact with a young fertilized female mite with a contact time of 15 to 20 minutes. The mite remains viable for 2 to 5 days on inanimate objects. Hence, transmission through mites such as infected bedding or clothing is possible but less likely. Once attached to their host, 10 to 15 mites mate on the surface of the skin. After fertilization, the male mite dies. The female mite burrows into the epidermis of the host, where she lays up to 3 eggs per day for the duration of her 30 to 60 day lifetime. An affected host harbors approximately 11 adult female mites during a typical infestation. The eggs hatch in 3 to 4 days. Now let's learn about the life cycle of Sarcoptes scabii. The mite life cycle consists of egg, larva, nymph, and adult stages. Eggs are laid on the host. The larva hatches from the egg and is identified by three pairs of legs. The larva molts into a nymph. It has four pairs of legs and molts into the adult. The adult mite with four pairs of legs lives in or on the host. The incubation period in new cases is one month. Reinfection has an incubation period of one to three days. There may be symptoms due to delayed type 4 hypersensitivity reaction to the mites, their eggs, or sibla or packets of feces. This reaction causes intense pruritus, the hallmark of the disease. In classical scabies patients, there would be an average number of 12 to 15 adult female mites. Let's go over the different types of scabies. First, classical scabies. This type has a characteristic distribution of lesions along the circle of Hebra. Differential diagnosis of classical scabies include atopic dermatitis, pomphylix, popular urticaria, contact dermatitis, tinea corporis, lichen planus, id eruptions, dermatitis herpetiformis, and bites from mosquitoes, lice, fleas, or other mites. Next, crusted scabies. This type is also known as Norwegian scabies. They're observed in mentally impaired, paralysis, immunocompromised, and leprosy patients. It is a highly infectious condition and harbors millions of mites. It's usually seen over the scalp, face, neck, palms, and soles. Differential diagnosis of crusted scabies include psoriasis, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, Derriere's disease, lichen planus, and pityriasis rubra pilaris. Now for infantile scabies. These lesions can be seen over the scalp, palms, and soles. Involvement of the face is uncommon in people older than 5 years. Differential diagnosis of infantile scabies include eczema herpeticum, papular urticaria, and viral exanthem. Now for nodular scabies. This type is due to a foreign body reaction to retained products. Firm, dull red nodules are seen over the scrotum, penis, elbows, and axillary folds. Differential diagnosis of nodular scabies include arthropod bites and pseudolymphoma.
Let's quickly touch on genital scabies. These are sexually transmitted scabies. The last type is animal transmitted scabies. These are transmitted from dogs, are called pseudoscabies, and have no burrows. These lesions are usually seen on the forearm, lower chest, abdomen, and thighs. Now let's talk about the clinical features. First, the symptoms. They include intense nocturnal itching and the presence of similar complaints in the family. Now for the signs. Primary skin lesions are manifested as papules and vesicles. Now let's talk about the burrow. It is a gray-brown line 5 millimeters in length seen on finger web spaces and genitalia with the mite as a black dot at the end. It is a special pathognomonic lesion of scabies. The burrow can be a dot, dotted line, curve, or curved line. It's identified through a fountain pen ink test. Lesions are commonly distributed as the circle of hebra, seen over web spaces, sides of the fingers, flexor aspects of the wrist, elbows, anterior axillary folds, penis, scrotum, areoli, nipples in women, thigh, buttocks, sacrum, and periumbilical areas. Secondary skin lesions are manifested as excoriations, nodules, pustules, and eczematization. Now let's learn about the diagnosis of scabies. Usually, scabies can be diagnosed clinically by the presence of multiple excoriated papules over the abdomen, finger web spaces, and genital region. The patient frequently complains of intense itching, especially at night. We should also cover the detection of burrows. The suspicious area of skin can be rubbed with ink from a fountain pen, which will glow under a special light. Dermatoscopy of burrows show a jet with a contrail sign. Now let's go over the principles of scabies treatment. Treat all family members. Also treat secondary complications of scabies if any need to be treated first. Treat fomites by putting them in hot water for two to four days. Scabicidal creams should be applied to the whole body thoroughly, from the neck to the toes. Repeat application for 7 to 14 days is needed. Let's go over the options for topical treatment. First, permethrin. At a concentration of 5%, it's applied for a duration of 8 to 14 hours. It's considered safe for use during pregnancy, as well as in children and infants. As for the adverse effects, it is a neurotoxin that causes paralysis and death in ectoparasites. It is most commonly used and associated with irritation. Next, lindane. It's also known as gamma-benzene hexachloride. At a concentration of 1%, it is applied topically for a duration of 8 hours, with a repeat application after 1 week. It is not considered safe for use during pregnancy or in children and infants. Adverse effects include skin rash, conjunctivitis, irritability, vertigo, stupor, ataxia, insomnia, convulsions, arrhythmia, and respiratory failure. Next, crotamatin. At a concentration of 10%, it is applied using two applications within a 48-hour period. It is considered safe for use during pregnancy as well as in children and infants. Its only adverse effect is that it has an antipuritic effect. Now for benzoyl benzoate. At concentrations ranging from 10 to 25 percent, it is typically applied for three consecutive nights. It's considered safe for use during pregnancy. It is safe for children, but is not recommended for use in infants. Its adverse effect is that it's an irritant. Next, precipitated sulfur. At concentrations ranging from 3 to 6%, it's typically applied for three consecutive nights. It is considered safe for use during pregnancy, lactation, as well as in children. Lastly, malathion. Available at a concentration of 5%, it 
It's typically applied for a duration of 8 to 14 hours. It's considered safe for use during pregnancy. However, it is not considered safe for children and infants. Malathion can be particularly useful in the control of epidemics within institutions. Now let's cover oral treatment. The main medication of choice for oral treatment is ivermectin. It acts by interrupting glutamate and aminobutyric acid-induced neurotransmission in parasites, causing paralysis and death. A single dose is 200 micrograms per kilogram. It's associated with a 56% cure rate. With repeat application for 14 days, it later has a 96% cure rate. Ivermectin should be avoided in pregnancy in children of less than 5 years of age. The adverse effects include fever, pruritus, dizziness, edema, and postural hypotension. Moreover, toxic effects include mydriasis, somnolence, reduced motor activity, tremors, and ataxia. Let's go over the preferred treatments according to clinical type. For classical scabies, use permethrin at 5% and gamma-benzene hexachloride at 1%. For genital scabies, treat the sexual partner. For infantile scabies, use permethrin at 5% and crotamatin at 10%. For nodular scabies, use steroid creams and intralesional injections. As for crusted scabies, it is more difficult to treat. Use permethrin at 5% and gamma-benzene hexachloride at 1% as creams with oral treatment. Using ivermectin with 200 micrograms per kilogram as a dose and repeat after one week. For animal transmitted scabies, treat the dog. Now let's quickly go over the methods of supportive treatment. Treatment is best done at bedtime with antihistamines, topical and systemic antibiotics, and emollients. Let's finish off by covering the complications of untreated scabies. There may be secondary infections, such as impetigo, ichthyma, folliculitis, cellulitis, and lymphangitis. There may also be eczematization, which is commonly seen in patients with atopic dermatitis. It can cause acute glomerulonephritis infection secondary to nephrodigenic strains of beta-hemolytic streptococci. Norwegian scabies can lead to erythroderma. Thank you for listening to this module about scabies.